Welcome to episode number 128 of the Life Changing Questions podcast. Today, I have a friend, a colleague, and a mentor uh, by the name of Alessia Minkus. Alessia is a multi award winning entrepreneur that has started and run nine, nine of her own seven, eight figure companies over the last 20 years. And she's generated over a total of over 500 million in revenue. So during the past decade, she's traveled uh, all over the globe, speaking on stages uh, at thousands of events for her own global business training company, Industry Rockstar. Uh, her leadership and scaling systems have impacted over 3 million business owners online and offline. And she's personally mentored thousands of entrepreneurs. Uh, during the last few years, she has partnered and or shared the stage with icons like Kevin B, Sir Richard Branson, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Lisa Nichols, Randy Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, Kevin Harrington, and many more. So Alessia, welcome to the uh, the podcast today. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And uh, it's actually fun to hear you saying that because you've been part of some of those events and some of these stages, et cetera. So uh, it was fun to hear you mention these things, uh, remembering <laughs> you know, when we were touring together. Uh, we've uh, we've had the privilege to uh, to to travel. I, I know you've um, been in your stages uh, in many countries around the world. And uh, Alessia, one of the things I'd like to to point out to the listeners today, one thing that didn't come up in your bio, of course, is that you are a mother and you uh, do such a wonderful job with your family as well. Now that's something that can be easily overlooked when we hear people having such success that you have in business and you're doing an amazing job with the family. Tell us a little bit about that because. It's uh, it's not it's not necessarily an easy thing to to do. I mean, to do either one of those things well it takes a lot of effort. But the fact that you managed to do both together at the same time is is absolutely uh, amazing to me. So, I wonder if you tell us a little bit about your journey to where you are now, and uh, a little bit how that's uh, evolved with with uh, doing such a great job with the family as well. Yeah, well, thank you. That's a great question. And um, yes, I am a mother of. I have two of my own children, and then I have, of course, a bonus child as well. So three children in the family, it's a lot, a lot of children, a lot of me. Um, and, you know, when you say it's not easy to do both, and, you know, on some levels, I'm really, really, really grateful for everything that I've done before having kids. Uh, not that I've stopped after having kids, but I think it has set some foundation. And it was really important for me to do certain things before having kids, of course, you know, much more time and flexibilities and freedom um, to just pursue my own passions and so as well to establish myself in certain industries where I wanted. So um, that made it easier, I feel, uh, uh, in the transition with having kids and having to, you know, put somebody else's needs in front of mine sometimes and in front of the businesses. So it was something that I think, like, was really, really kind of very, very important for, um, for, for my own kind of story. And I know that there are many, many, many women that have different stories. I mean, women that have started very successful businesses from scratch. Sometimes women have started their first business after having something inspired by their kids and by their families and by what they wanted possible for them. Um, just for me, it's been different. Like a lot of things I've done them before and then been able to actually leverage things uh, as I had kids. Um, I knew from a very early age, as uh, you know, I know we discussed many times, I knew from a very early age that I wanted to be a mom. It was one of the things that was most important to me. Um, and so, um, you know, as I was starting to establish my businesses, I mean, I went through a lot of ups and downs. And some of the ups and downs have uh, really kind of been really important for me and, and had really taught me what did I want my business and my life to look like in order to be ready to, um, you know, be the mom that I wanted to be once I would have kids. So, you know, when I started in my business and my business kind of journey, I was 19 years old um, and I kind of stumbled into kind of entrepreneurship uh, because my parents were running a business many years already. My dad was driving it and really like, you know, dedicating his life, his time, like all his efforts to the business. And he had done a very good job. He had a, a very nice business. Um, at that time, it was a 10 million euro per year business. Uh, but, you know, I saw him kind of trying to uh, break through that 10 million euro a year ceiling for many, many, many years. And it wasn't working. And he tried harder, harder and harder and harder. You know, that, that, that can, it was the... Uh, part time that uh, my dad was in, right? Like work harder, work harder. We, 
his parents used to be actually farmers, so it was like he worked harder and harder, and, harder and things will change. And they didn't. Uh, what changed was that he sacrificed a lot of his life um, trying. So he sacrificed his social um, you know, life, he sacrificed his romantic life, like with my mom. I mean, they never split up, but they had really rough times. He sacrificed a lot of the relationship with me. And he ended up actually sacrificing his health so much so that when I was 19, he had um, a heart attack and ended up in the hospital with doctor telling him, uh, you, like, if you want to actually take care of your health, you got to stop. Uh, you know, you can't do what you're doing anymore. You need to take six months out of business, out of the busyness, and out of, you know, your kind of like that life of constantly pushing and really focusing on your health. And that's when I, you know, started my, my entrepreneurship journey, because at that time we did, a, you know, a meeting with my mom and I and um, some of you know the closest people in our business and I remember you know everybody was very concerned of course because you removed my dad from the business there was almost no business anymore um, and so somebody said well we really need somebody who makes this business for the next six months until Johnny my dad can come back and at that time you know if you remember how naive you are at 19 years old but I said I'll do it how difficult can that be? My dad has set up everything already. I'll just run it for six months and it will be like a walk in the park. And of course, I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I discovered that very early. Um, but so, you know, in the process of actually trying to get that right, um, the first step, but which is very often, you know, uh, what we do as, as human beings, just right, and unconsciously we repeat the same patterns that our parents have run and it's totally unconscious we don't realize as we do it and you know that's why for example having coaches etc that can you know see things from different perspectives and point out these patterns is so important so at that time no coach uh, no consultant no help you know many many years ago in Italy like it wasn't that common and so I just like, you know, went into a being mode, into a working hard mode. And I created the same pattern that my dad created. So, you know, fast forward six months and then even a year, etc. I was there running the company, doing everything myself, pushing harder and harder, trying to break through that $10 million euro uh, ceiling. And it wasn't working. And like, you know, the story repeats itself. And it repeats itself so much up to the point where I found myself one day at the hospital hearing that I had to take six months out of business and life, et cetera, to take care of my health because I had a horseback riding accident and I broke my spine. And when I heard that, you know, I remember saying, oh my gosh, like I heard that already. You know, I wasn't totally conscious about all the patterns that I was running, but that was you know, similar enough where it was like a wake up call Wait a second. Now it's the second time in a short, uh, in, a, in a short amount of time that I hear that somebody needs to take six months out of the same business in order to take care of their health. Like that's not healthy. And so that when I realized as well that again, my experience as a child had been for such a long time to miss my dad because he wasn't there, right? He was working so much and he hadn't created Distance, he hadn't created teams, etc. So he had to physically uh, do the things that needed to be done in the business. Um, that for me meant that again, I was missing him and I wasn't able to spend time with him, etc. And I realized that day that you know what I was creating, the future that I was creating for me and for my future kids was the same. Um, no, nothing would have changed if I didn't change anything. And so that's the moment where I knew I needed help and I needed professional help. And, you know, I kind of started to understand the difference between having your friends, you know, helping you or giving you advice and actually having a professional a co-mentor, a consultant that comes in, has experience, has systems, has, um, you know, knowledge that can really help you, you know, propel forward. And so through that journey and actually hiring my first coach, in the next three years, we were able to triple the company, getting to 30 million euro per year in revenue, getting a lot of time back. And that's when I got bit by the entrepreneurial kind of bug 
Um, and I started it in many other companies because at the time I thought, you know, if I can do it and have my life back and have my time and have time for myself and my patients, then, then that's awesome. And so that's when I actually started again to, uh, you know, start and run other companies throughout Europe and you know, the rest is history. Wow, such an inspiring story there. And I love that you pull out the message about the patterns and particularly generational patterns. So uh, by, by changing the pattern you know, that, that your father had and you found a new way to do it, you brought in a professional experience and help, you managed to triple the business, which is incredible and allow you to do that more. Now, as a, a mom now, uh, you know, many years on and now you have children, presumably there, your children are going to follow your patterns that you set up now to, uh, to create, uh, to create that, rather than forming into the patterns that maybe weren't serving the family before. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, as I look at my kids, I wonder, I mean, they're very young, of course, right? So um, I wonder what will be their path and will they actually rerun our patterns and which ones, right? I mean, even because there is me and then there is Kate, my husband. And so like, which patterns will they actually take on and run and which one will we need to help them kind of entangle themselves from <laughs> and I don't know yet you know um, definitely you know we can start to see some preferences and um, um, you know some talent coming up um, in especially you know in the older ones uh, but it will be interesting to see and of course like I always wonder as well like and I had no idea about all these things not with my parents so I kind of ran right into it without knowing anything about it. And today, instead, we know so much about it. And our family, of course, discussed that so much. And we, you know, our kids have, um, you know, the benefit, the, you know, and, and, and sometimes a little bit the challenge of having parents that actually know these things and can identify them, et cetera. So will that change something? I, I, mean, I don't know. And I'm really curious to see what happens with them and with their professional life and career and choices and um, it would be really interesting because I feel like again most of the times I talk with people that have discovered these things at some point in their life after running to them but I rarely talk with anybody that says well my family was already aware of that so I I don't know I understood that earlier or I avoided <laughs> them or I still ran into them the same way <laughs> I don't know yeah, I don't know either, but I, I have a feeling your children uh, with two amazing leaders like yourself, they're probably going to pick up on some of these patterns uh, sooner rather than later. So I think that's a great thing. Alessa, you, you mentioned that, you know, of course, you, you went on a very uh, interesting journey starting 19 in business that was, uh, you know, baptism by fire, by the signs of it, not everyone gets the, uh, the opportunity to run a company of that size and, and let alone at that age and then let alone triple it. Let's fast forward to today because I know now you spend a lot of time uh, giving back and teaching uh, other people um, skills and how do they manage this and do this for themselves. I know particularly in terms of leadership and revenue expansion and business scaling strategies. So maybe tell us a little bit about what you're up to uh, today. Yeah, so, well, um, I think the word that you used in terms of like giving back is a big part of what I feel like I do today and what I am called to today. Um, that and the other word that comes up is kind of balance. Right, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely in a very special time in my life, I feel, because I have young kids. And so, uh, it, again, it's very important to me to have that balance of being able to enjoy time with them, being able to spend time with them, being able to make memories with them, et cetera. And at the same time, um, although I, I have considered and you know, over COVID, I have actually slowed down my business activities a lot and consider actually stopping for a while. And retiring and just being with it, I didn't totally for myself to do that either. And um, so I've learned that balance is really important for me. Like for example, as you know, today um, I'm coming to you live from Sardinia. We spend several months in, in summer, um, and you know I'm here in front of me. There's a beautiful view of the sea and the mountains, etc. Um, and so we spent, you know, several months here. Now, a lot of people say, well, do you completely take time off? And the reality is no, and not because we can't, but because we don't want to. Like, you know, I, I do feel like I'm very passionate about what I do, uh, but we have balance. So in general, this is an exception because of course it's you. And so I was very excited to be part of, you know, your community and your podcast, et cetera. But in general, in the morning, which right now here it's eight, 
20 in the morning. But normally in the morning, you have no business commitment at all. And the morning is just family time and holiday time and kind of tourist time and beach time and these kind of things. And then in the afternoon, instead, uh, we start working around 3 p.m. in the afternoon and we go around until dinner, etc. Um, and this balance has been very important to me, not only to, you know, to spend time with kids and give them the high quality that I would like to give them because I feel like I can contribute and spend time with them, but vice versa as well um, to actually bring the best of me to the business. Uh, because again, I can recharge and I don't get actually kind of nervous or frustrated that, 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 you know, I'm sacrificing something for the business. So what I do today, yes, I mean, there is a lot of teaching and kind of um, giving back by uh, sharing the things that I've learned during my, um, you know, my journey into entrepreneurship. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot right now of um, private consulting. A few months ago, actually, and, you know, I told you I started down a lot during you know, the pandemic, etc. My business activities, I felt like my kids needed me more. And then about six months ago, at the beginning of this year, I started to think about, um, you know, I saw the kids were kind of settled, things were, you know, moving in the right direction. And so I felt like I could actually pick up uh, more in terms of business. And, um, you know, and I, and, I, and I asked myself, like, what would I like business to look like now? Because taking a break, it's a great way as well to reset, right? I mean, sometimes we get into, again, into patterns, into routines, into, um, you know, some sort of things that are doing, you know, it becomes our, uh, you know, our, our normal, but, you know, we rarely have the opportunity to step back and say, wow, I'm almost starting to scratch again. What do I want it to look like right now? And when I asked myself that, uh, what came very strongly to me was two things. One was, again, I was craving that um, connection of the one-on-one -on -one consulting and coaching, which I used to do more back in the days. And then as our trainings got busier, I put on post and I was really like, maybe you know, something cycles so because I hadn't done it in a long time. I really felt called to that. And the second thing was really um, the desire to contribute to women founders, women founders, women entrepreneurs, uh, women business owners. Uh, I know because I am one uh, that um, there are some specific challenges that um, we as women face in terms of actually running our businesses, establishing ourselves in our industries. And um, again, sometimes it's as well, you know, managing personal life and business life I and mean, several of the women that I work with have young kids themselves. Um, many of them run multiple seven figure companies and they're looking for the ones themselves, they're looking for systems, they're looking to empower their teams, they're looking to actually, um, you know, create a little bit more freedom for themselves so that they can, you know, again, work on the business, but not being kind of uh, you know, in the business constantly, in, you know, in the business as well that doesn't leave them any time for their family. So that's what I do right now. Uh, most of the time, There's a lot of private consulting. Um, I'm working with some amazing women um, all over the world. Uh, and again, another thing that I love is that the private consulting, uh, you know, model really allows you to just pick and choose your clients wherever they are. So um, I, I really have the honor and privilege of supporting some incredible women um, that are up for great stuff. And again, they're looking at scaling systems, they're looking at bringing more revenue, they're looking at creating teams so they can make a bigger impact. And they're looking as well at creating more balance in their lives so that they can, again, feel like they like, keep contributing um, you know, their gifts to the world while being present with their families. Absolutely beautiful, really beautiful. And what I'd like to pick out of that was a powerful question you asked in the middle of that is, what would I like business to look like now? And I think it's a great question for us all to ask us because we, the business can evolve, we can evolve with the business, but actually, Alessia, what you've done is you've taken, uh, taken a moment to say, well, actually, is it gonna serve me now to do it this way or do I want it another way? And you said you want it another way and of course, you're finding the ability to run your business from wherever you want in the world and to have the time with your children and, uh, and, and you want to do amazing things with them. And I, I see your social media posts uh, every, every, uh, every few days. I'm seeing pictures of them playing in the pool, you know, catching fish, having fun with mom. So <laughs> the amount of time and energy they're getting with you. And at the same time, 
it sounds like your clients are still being completely fulfilled. It is amazing. And it's a great lesson to, uh, to any of us listening. And how do we want things to be in our business? We can easily fall into the pattern of, you know, having always worked nine until five or, you know, nine till nine, whatever it is we, we do. And, you know, we should question what do we want and how do we want to create it? Because there's clearly, uh, with Alessia's example, there's, there's definitely another way. Alessia, um, since I'm talking about the question you asked yourself, that's one of the, uh, the core things we look at on this show. And we say that the quality of the questions we ask ourselves impacts the quality of the life that we lead. So with that being true, what's one question that you've asked that's had maybe the biggest positive impact on your life or the life of the, the clients that you serve? Um, so it's a great question, Kevin. And I think, um, I mean, um, I think it's not just one question, like it's a question that I ask myself periodically, uh, which is again, you know, what's next? Um, I feel very often we a little bit like crystallize our experience, like we get into a groove, like something has been working for a while and it becomes normal. It becomes how we do things. <laughs> Um, and, and then we kind of get stuck into that way. And as you said, I mean, you know, you just said like, we might change. Actually, we don't, you know, it's not we might change. Like there is only one certain, we will change. Uh, and again, I having started my journey in business at 19 years old and being this year, I'm turning 30. So I have started to have quite some cycles under my belt. And I see that my needs, my desires, um, the opportunities changed a lot, um, and you know they they really come in cycles. I mean, there are moments of actually um, again stepping back a little bit and slowing down and um, taking things you know, a little easier. And there are times of pushing and and really like being out there, etc. There is no right and wrong, but there is what is right for that specific moment, that specific part of our evolution as people and as business owners, as contributors and as parents and as wives and as, you know, husbands, as, as just like as complete human beings. So I feel like the most important question that has helped me both fulfill my mission and feel like really, you know, on track and as well, therefore, like really serve my clients is constantly asking me what's next. And again, as I said before, like what is the next phase going to look like? Um, because again, I feel it's important that we keep asking ourselves this, that question. We keep uh, we keep creating. I mean, we start a business very often because either we are called to help somebody, we are called to make a difference, um, something we are passionate about and we want to do it. And therefore, when we started, we do have that creative process of designing something that really works. Year, three years, five years, ten years down the road what we have designed at the beginning might not work for us anymore. And we might need to go really back to the drawing board and ask us those questions again, like what does it look like right now? What would serve me? And how can I serve my community, my clients, my industry today, which keeps changing. And as human beings, very often we're very, very concerned, very scared about change. And funny enough, that's the only thing, the only certainty we have is <laughs> change. So um, I think engaging in these questions periodically and really making sure that you're constantly creating, uh, you know, your work life, business, your schedule, your, you know, client base, etc. Um, coming from something that really nourishes you in that moment can will change and there is no shame change, you know, something that made you very happy a year ago might be like, feel like a burden today. Um, and so, you know, with, of course, with elegance and you know, uh, you know being really um you know really really nice with people etc but you can change and you can um you know, change what your business is focused on you can change again your rhythms your schedules etc in order to make them really serve your life i mean we say you know as you know with uh, k my husband we say you know, your business should be the vehicle to your dreams and in order to stay like that, it needs to be updated. It needs to be constantly created uh, from you know where you are right now and where you want to go in for the next phase. I, I love that, very crystal clear. And I think to summarize that by saying your business is a vehicle for your dreams. I know a lot of entrepreneurs and me along the way get that flip the uh, the wrong the, the wrong way around. They uh, seem to be working for the business rather than making the business work for them or fit right. what they want. And that's super cool. Now, what's great about that, when you think about it as a metaphor, as a business, as a vehicle, so <clears throat> what's next or where's next? That, that business is uh, 
designed to take you somewhere on a, on a journey. Where do you want it to go? What I, I There's two other pieces in that that I really pulled through, Alessia. One is the question, what, what's next? Is really keeping you in that creative phase, designing and designing new things. Otherwise, we can, we can get caught in a process or a system, and this is going to prompt us to be more creative. Maybe there's something else, particularly in the context that you said around serving my community. So if we're being creative around, hey, well, what else does my client need? What else can I be giving them? And I know uh, when, when my clients are focused on a question like that, similar to that, it's amazing because all of a sudden they realize there's all these other things that they could be doing for their clients or the community and additional services they could be offering them that the clients would love to buy from if only they, they packaged them up and offered them. So, so what's next? Really great question for us all to be, uh, to be thinking about. Now, Alessia, uh, of course, for you to have had the success that you've had with the businesses that you've had and particularly do that in the context of now of having a family as well, what's some of the habits and rituals that you've had that really served you to allow you to, uh, to accomplish the things that you have? Well, that's a great question. And um, I mean, I would love to tell you that I have like a three hour morning routine that I would <laughs> when I meditate and I do yoga and I drink my green smoothies and somebody <laughs> told me for the first three hours that I wake. In order to do that, I would need to probably wake up like at two o'clock in the morning and yeah. make it up by six for sure, like sometimes even earlier. Um, so I think that the biggest thing is really, I mean, uh, you know, we talked a lot about meditation and, and, and far enough, right now, in, like during these three days, we started yesterday, we will finish tomorrow, we are delivering with Kane um, a training specific about like, how do you set your brain up for, um, you know, being a super achiever or really, you know, creating the impact that you want to create in the world. And I think one of the most important parts is, um, you know, for me at least, has been flexibility. It's really, I mean, uh, and, and I notice that things start to go out of flow when I get stuck in you know, some sort of beliefs or habits, or instead, you know, if I can keep it flowing and I can keep it flexible, things all will work out. Um, and so it's really that flexibility, and together with that flexibility goes as well. I mean, um, you know, meditation and that stillness of mind is so important. And yet, for example, for me, like if I would just wait for the right time to, um, be in a quiet room with the lights and uh, you know soft music and be able to sit you know um, crisscross applesauce and wait like 20-30 minutes um, sometimes there are some days where that would just never happen and so you know the ability of actually going back to yourself and listening to yourself even in the business even in the noise even in the commotion um, commotion of a family commotion of a business commotion of traveling right I mean uh, many things might actually feel like they're putting you away from that place of stillness and being able to listen to yourself. But actually, again, uh, you know, we call it a walking meditation, like being able to access that while performing activities, while moving forward, while, I don't know, walking through an airport uh, or while having stream around you, right? Um, is really, I think, what is very important for us in terms of making sure we can um, keep up that level of achievement and impact, etc. Because again, it, it helps us stay connected to ourselves, to who we are. It's super important. Alessa, how does someone do that? If they're not familiar with getting connected to themselves or listening to themselves, how, how can they, they do that? I mean, particularly if we're in a busy, you say the busy airport, busy with kids, Sometimes it's very difficult because there's so much external distraction. Is there something you could you could share with us that allow us to go in with? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not a meditation coach. <laughs> <laughs> there are some good ones out there. Uh, what works for me is to focus on my breath. And so mm -hmm. even in a busy thing, like, I mean, that's something that I will have with me. Right? So I don't actually specifically set up in order to find my breath. And so focus on my breath and kind of going inwards and, and, and trying to listen again what's going on. I mean, it's that I remember when I first started, which I actually did a lot of like personal development and, you know, went way into like energetics, et cetera. And when I started, it was a very foreign um, kind of realm for me. Um, but I started with really like, you know, starting to scan my body and really do a little checkup and listening to what was going on in my body like you know sometimes you discover things as well when you do this and like wow like I don't know my toe hurts and 
I was so busy, like walking around and chasing kids or, um, you know, going from one meeting to the next one or, you know, speaking on stage and, you know, meeting new partners, et cetera, that I didn't even notice, right? So first of all, uh, for me, it's been really becoming more aware and conscious and really like taking in what was going on in my body, focusing with my breath. And that has been then kind of like a portal to what was going on inside of me. So, you know, after practicing that for um, a while, I've been able to access more like, you know, like feelings and emotions that might be stored somewhere in my body. And, um, and I always say, I mean, a lot of people say the next question very often is like, well, even if I honest that, how do I change it? And again, I am no expert. So if you're interested in that, I definitely suggest you connect with somebody that can help you in that. I've been mean, expertise in business development, not uh, meditation. But, you know, one thing that I've learned throughout my personal development journey is that change starts with acknowledging, like bringing things to the light, really looking at things, right? So even just sitting with those feelings, uh, instead of rejecting them, covering them up, pretending they're out there, you know, especially the uncomfortable. I mean, it's always easy to sit with joy. It's always easy to sit with happiness. But when we feel frustration, when we feel sadness, when we feel grieving, when we feel when we find ourselves having those, you know, those feelings that are labeled as kind of like negative or you know less desirable, etc. That when we try to kind of push them under the rug <laughs> and pretend like they're not there, instead of learning to just sit with them and acknowledging them and really like you know looking at them. Um, that's the first step to change. And sometimes you don't need to do anything else than that. Uh, by by acknowledging them, by actually looking at them, you give your you know I mean, we are very very uh, you know very very efficient beings. So uh, we give ourselves this space to process through these feelings, and sometimes they dissolve just like just like the, the same way they are, they they came up, they dissolve in front of you if you give them space to be. Right. Instead, as we try to compress them into our closet and, cl- and shut the door, they kind of become stronger and stronger because they want to be acknowledged. Um, so sometimes that's all it, 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 you know, it's needed. It's just a really, again, not seeing what's going on, sitting with them. It's not always about doing something. Sometimes it's just about being with it, letting it uh, and this whole process uh, evolve sometimes in something else. Um, and that is really important, I feel, because again, in order to bring fresh energy, I mean, a lot of people ask us, how are you always so positive and how do you have so much energy? How do you, and the fact is that if you don't take care of what's going on inside of you, like all these emotions will definitely like suck the energy out of you. Right. So it's important instead, um, to really let your soul and your body, et cetera, process through these things and move on. I mean, we are designed to move on, right? Again, we are designed for change and uh, we are not going to be stuck in any specific situation or emotion for a long time so powerful so no matter how busy your day is or what's going on then the uh, the tip here is to actually just take a moment and focus on your breath and in focusing on your breath take some time to get that awareness check in on your body uh, feel for what emotions are coming up and uh, to Alessi's point, acknowledging them can be uh, the very first, first point of uh, opening that closet and letting them out. We don't, we don't want to shove them in the closet because that's going to burn our energy and uh, slow us down. So Alessia, really, really fantastic habit. And uh, for a non-meditation teacher, I think you've explained that very well. I think you could have another career <laughs> if you want to. If you want to go into that field, it's, it's wide open for you because you explained that so well. Uh, Alessia... <laughs> One of the um, other questions I'm I'm always intrigued on, you achieved and accomplished so much uh, in your uh, life to date, but I wonder what's maybe one thing you may have on your bucket list that you are still looking forward to accomplish or or you want to uh, to, to go and tackle in the future? Um, Well, that's a great question. And I feel like it's a little bit the question that I mean right now. And I I will let you know as soon as I have it. Um, There are a couple of things that are coming to my mind, but I haven't actually really my finger anything, uh, which is as well why I'm, you know, I said earlier, like there are different phases um, in life. And I mean, sometimes when we look, people have achieved a lot. It looks like always like they always know what the next thing is. And they always like, they're always pushing towards something. And I think it's important for people to understand everything, you know, everything is kind of ebbs and constantly. Um, and, you know, 
even for people that have achieved a lot and they are very, you know, achievers for themselves, like there are moments where, you know, you just, again, you're listening to yourself. So on some levels, I mean, really important for me right now, again, is this uh, conversation about uh, women founders supporting, you know, uh, women founders, women business owners, et cetera, in stepping up more. Uh, there is definitely a change in, in of paradigm in the business world. Uh, I've been seeing that now for many, many years, a, a lot of like feminine values that were considered uh, weakness, that were considered, um, you know, something to actually again, hide, uh, et cetera. And, and I grew up like that. Like I grew up, you know, for, a, for the first part of my business journey, I felt like in order to succeed, in order to be taken seriously, in order to be even you know, considered a business leader, I needed to show up, act, uh, talk, dress, almost like a man. So I never wear a, a, a skirt or never wear a, a dress or uh, you know, I would always wear you know, black things. And like, you know, there, were, there are these things and it's changing now. Um, again, sometimes we don't even realize, but for example, some of the biggest companies that we have been seeing and kind of emerging, establishing themselves and really changing the world of business um, in the last 15 years um, have been, you know, strongly leading through um, in value. I mean, even the, all the social media platform, right? I mean, sharing, community building, connection, etc. Those are all feminine values um, and business you know, traditionally used to be not about that. It used to be about transactions and negotiating and getting the most for yourself, et cetera. And again, many companies that you know, have emerged in the last 15 years have actually brought this fresh breath uh, into the business because they have actually found that their, you know, their whole model into um, you know, in, into feminine um, values. I mean, look at Airbnb where you to literally like when you're a uh, whole oh, right? and you invite people to share the experience with you and you invite them to share the house home that you have created and facebook and instagram where you can share experiences and pictures and videos and contribute and like and you know facebook creating the care buttons like you know all these things that you know are really driven um, into uh, feminine values so there is definitely a very big paradigm shift um, i'm really happy to be part of it and i'm really happy to support um you know women in that um and then you know we'll see what comes up from there like you know, it's not like you choose a new path and then you kind of wonder where will that lead to and what would be the reward for that and what will be like the big thing that you achieve that there you go. It sounds like a, a pretty incredible thing to be focusing on, and it's going to make a big difference to many people. And as a father of two girls, I'm so glad that you're out there pioneering that, because I think it's, it's so important that we can connect to our true essence and, and go and deliver the things we want from, from who we really are. So, Alessia, that's beautiful. You've given so much uh, value and so much wisdom today, Alessia. If uh, anyone listening wanted to uh, connect with you or, or maybe even work with you, where would they, uh, where would be the best place for them to, to come and find you? Uh, well, I mean, if somebody, I mean, again, my mission right now is really to help specifically women led business as women founders and women owners, um, you know, scale up their company in a way that is sustainable for them. I mean, again, whether they have a family, whether they don't have a family, but anyway, they want to create a business. It's not sucking out energy, but it's instead filling them up with energy, giving them, you know, the ability to actually really kind of um, contribute to the community and to themselves at the same time. And so, you know, if anybody is in that, um, you know, in, in that conversation, um, they can even just write me, you know, my email is alessia at industryrockstar.com and that's the best way and we can take it from there. Awesome. And I will put that in the page notes, the show notes, wherever you're listening. So it will just be super easy for you to go in there and click on that and contact Alessia. Alessia, uh, we really appreciate your time and your energy today. It's, uh, you've been so generous. Uh, if there was one final thing, is there anything else you'd like to share with the listeners before we uh, sign off today? Uh, well, nothing. And it, it just like, I love what you shared when you said, you know, as a father of two daughters, and, and I can tell you, as a mother of one daughter, and you know, two fathers essentially. 
I can tell you that I've discovered that these conversations are um, just as important for you know, young girls as they are for young boys. Uh, because as I look at the boys, I feel like, you know, I wish for them as well to live in a world where, you know, they can have strong contributions from strong women and really grow together instead of having to carry the whole thing themselves as well. So I feel like, again, that's part of the paradigm shift. I mean, we don't do it just for the girls. We do that because together we rise and together we rise is like together. <laughs> we can't just, uh, we, we can't win if only one group kind of rises up. We, we need to rise all together. What a very powerful message to end on. Uh, we, we all win together. We can't win by being an individual group. And I guess that applies not just to masculine or feminine, Alessia, that probably applies to many other concepts we could talk about as well. So again, thank you so much for your time on the show today. We, we really, truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Kevin.